Brothers and sisters, welcome to the Liturgy of the Word for Saturday. And so we begin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Let us pray. O God, who gave sons Cornelius and Cyprian to your people, as diligent shepherds and valiant martyrs, grant that through their intercession, we may be strengthened in faith and constancy, and spend ourselves without reserve for the unity of the Church. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Here is a saying that you can rely on, and nobody should doubt, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. I myself am the greatest of them. And if mercy has been shown to me, it is because Jesus Christ meant to make me the greatest evidence of his inexhaustible patience for all the other people who would later have to trust in him to come to eternal life. To the eternal King, the undying, invisible and only God, be honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Word of the Lord May the name of the Lord be blessed for evermore. Praise, O servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. May the name of the Lord be blessed both now and for evermore. May the name of of the Lord be blessed for evermore. From the rising of the sun to its setting, praised be the name of the Lord. High above all nations is the Lord, above the heavens his glory. May the name of the Lord be blessed for evermore. Who is like the Lord our God, who has risen on high to his throne, yet stoops from the heights to look down? to look down upon heaven and earth. From the dust he lifts up the lowly, from the dung heap he raises the poor. May the name of the Lord be blessed for evermore. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am the way, the truth and the life, says the Lord. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, There is no sound tree that produces rotten fruit, nor again a rotten tree that produces sound fruit. For every tree can be told by its own fruit. People do not pick figs from thorns, nor gather grapes from brambles. A good man draws what is good from the store of goodness in his heart. A bad man draws what is bad from the store of badness. For a man's words flow out from what fills his heart. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? Everyone who comes to me and listens to my words and acts on them, I will show you what he is like. He is like the man who... When he built his house dug and dug deep and laid the foundations on rock, when the river was in flood, it bore down on that house, but could not shake it. It was so well built. But the man who listens and does nothing is like the man who built his house on soil with no foundations. As soon as the river bore down on it, it collapsed. And what a ruin that house became. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today the Church celebrates the memorial of Saints Pope Cornelius, who was Bishop of Rome, and Bishop Cyprian, who was Bishop of Carthage, during the period of schism and great persecutions in the 3rd century. They were linked by one particular issue. What to do with those apostatized Christians throughout the Roman Empire, who lapsed in their faith in time of persecution and then wished to return. 
An influential Roman priest called Novotian maintained that these persons could not be forgiven and allowed back to the church, along with murderers, adulterers, and those in second marriages. However, St. Cornelius, backed by St. Cyprian and St. Dionysius, upheld the church's teaching and allowed sinners to return to the church after performing public penance. Those two contemporaries were martyred in 250 AD and 258 AD, respectively. Now let's go to the first reading. The word tells us, Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. And this is found in first letter of St. Paul to Timothy, chapter 1, verses 15. Who will ever think that Saul, in the first reading, who began as a zealous persecutor of the newly emerging Christian community, will eventually be sent out by the Lord as apostle to the Gentiles? The Lord sees us as precious, and none of us here is beyond God's mercy and compassion, even those hardened sinners. We see this extraordinary change in Paul's life, where he was able to let go of the past as a zealous murderer, to move forward with renewed hope and courage, and preach the good news to all. Similarly, we too as sinners can draw strength from St. Paul to believe in this merciful and compassionate God who will not hold us ransom to our sins, but wants to liberate us so that we can move forward in our pilgrim journey. However, you and I have to return to the Lord and say that I'm sorry and I repent of my failings and wrongdoings. In 1946, Pope Pius XII spoke in a prophetic way. Perhaps the greatest sin in today's world is that both men and women have begun to lose the sense of sins. And so the question, do you then sense that we in this modern age has lost the sense of sin? This is something critical that we need to keep in mind as disciples of Christ. We know that humanity is wounded. And we often fail because of our weaknesses and choose evil as a consequence of original sin. Pope Francis said there are two types of people, those who have lost the sense of sin and those who have lost the sense of God's mercy. Both attitudes are harmful because they stop us from encountering the healing grace of God's merciful forgiveness. The irony is that while God is always bending forward, to embrace us as sinners, but we on our part tend to bend backwards and turn away from God's embrace. However, God never stops in His attempts to get our attention and always desire to draw us closer to His loving and merciful heart. Let us today turn like St. Paul to this merciful and compassionate Father in heaven, because there is no sin or failure that we can bring before our God, that cannot become the opportunity for starting up to live a new and different life under the banner of God's mercy. Amen. And so we now pray this wonderful prayer that Jesus taught his disciples, the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Through these mysteries which we have received, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that by the example of the martyrs, sons Cornelius and Cyprian, we may be strengthened with the fortitude of your Spirit to bear witness to the truth of the Gospel. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your Spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to proclaim the good news to all. Thanks be to God.